What's up guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, the Scarender. And today we're going up against Joe or Swaglith. And this is a guy I got actually a good respect for, for different reasons, but the one that really stands out is that he is one of those very, very good showdown players that are... He's very accustomed to the metagame, he does very, very, very good plays, and he's just overall a very, very offensive player. Which means that he actually overpowering a lot of teams and I really want to battle this guy because people that plays like this are very very tough to deal with because of um, well their offensive pressure if you aren't ready for it then you're going down you're going down fast and players like this usually you know it brings a lot of entertainment if you can deal with them and uh, I was really hoping that I was prepared for this kind of a substance and um, I didn't want to challenge him the higher tier he asked me for what tier I wanted to and I said are you because I really wanted you know yeah I don't want to risk <laughs> getting like I said swept and um, this felt safer for me definitely and um, you know I might tell myself life I'd say that because he's actually really good in end you are you so um, plus his favorite uh, or his um, uh, profile Pokemon is Sigilyph after all, so I pretty much just opened myself up for that. And you guys who've been following know exactly what I think about Sigilyph. Damn! Monster. Monster! <laughs> but anyway, like I said, he's a very, very good player, and um, I was a bit nervous going into this battle, because I knew I couldn't go with the standard set, because he will destroy me if I did so. So anyway, looking at his team, we've got Kubalion, Banet, Jolteon, Hitmontop, Sigilyph, and of course Clawlista. Uh, I myself decided to bring two NU pokes just to bring some versatility to my team and actually hope that it can work around it. So I brought the uh, Unvisant and Octillery. And besides that, I used Moltres. This was before the quick ban. Um, Hill Disk, Hitmonchan, and Rhyperior. And just overall, look at this team. Um, we have issues. Like, we have similar Pokemon, but his Pokemon are, in theory, a bit on the stronger side. Like, I had a I got Tillery, I got Clawlister, I got Hillis, he got Jolteon, uh, he got Hitmontop, I got Hitmonchan. It's it's a very, very like close design team, but um, different purposes. And um, as a get go, I really didn't know what kind of Pokemon to start off with. I was hoping for a, a Cobalion with Stealth Rocks, but he might as well start with Jolteon and doing some damage. Which meant that I actually decided to go with my Assault... No, I actually went with uh, my um, Unpheasant here and just outspeed everything that comes in. And hopefully I can get some prior damage there and see if I can work from that point on. Like I said, a bit nervous in this battle and um, yeah. Like I said, Swaggly is a really strong player and I really hope I could work around that. So, of course, with all this in mind, guys, let's go. So yeah. He is actually going to start off this battle really, really, like, I did not expect this. He's going to start with the Clawlist, uh, and, um, that is not good. That is not good. I have nothing for the Clawlist, or, like, in direct response, of course. So I'm just going to go for U-turn, and looking at that damage, I know that since the rival is gone, or is inbound, I still don't do enough. So I felt that Voltes, the Octillery, can probably deal with this thing rather properly and he's gonna go for ice beam and it won't really do anything so i felt very comfortable here but then we'll show him the dark poles and um it does a bit on the more side and of course it scores the flinch here and uh, the second one will actually hurt of course too and i will be able to retaliate with an energy ball but it is not enough to take this thing out which assumably this is assault vest and um yeah, that is tough. That is tough. This Clawlist will win the matchup, and like I said, they both are designed in similar ways because we're both Assault Vested, so that was really tough. So I'm just gonna bring in Saladin. Saladin is really my only, like, fast response to take this thing out. I'll try, I'm actually forcing him to stay in here, and I know he could switch out to his Jolteon and go for a Volt Absorb. I know that was a thing, but I just, I played it risky, I needed to play risky, and like I said, get some kind of momentum. So I go into my Moltres here, and um, yeah, I felt that I can at least bait out the Jolteon by going to that. And um, I'm not gonna take a risk here and uh, showing off my Rhyperior. Like I said, he could predict me and go for the Hidden Power Grass, and if so, my Rhyperior is gone, and I can't risk Rhyperior. Uh, my Hill Disk is actually not that useful in this battle, at least not in contrast to what my Rhyperior can bring to this battle. So. Gotta keep Rhyperior in its best condition as I can, and then hope I can do some damage. So he's gonna go with the Gumballion, 
and um, yeah, I took a risk here too, of course, and going to go for the hard switch in case it is a scarf variant with close combat. So I go and go in the hard switch, Moltres, and he goes for his self rocks, and um, yeah, that pretty much dent my team. I need a rapid spin, you know, ASAP to pull this off. So it's gonna go for Volt Switch, and that is definitely like the correct play to be honest. And it does a lot of damage. I did not expect Cobalion to do this much, but it's a very possible thing that he can actually do some decent amount of damage here. I just decided to go for an overheat because I felt real uncomfortable on whether he's gonna switch into. I knew he wasn't gonna stay in, but I needed some damn damage going. And overheat did some fair damage, but at the same time, I'm obviously dented here just by default. And it was a very aggressive play, but like I said, I needed to do something. And I got a hard switch, I know I can bring Moltres for one more go later on. So I'm gonna go with my Apollo which is my Hitmonchan, and pretty much I'm going to bait him, or not bait him, but I know we can't win against this matchup because of Drain Punch, but I know that um, I know that he might switch into his Bannet, so I'm not going to go for Rapid Spin or anything like that, I'm actually going to let the rock stay. And I did go to the Bannet, I went for an EQ, I know it seems like a weird move to go at, but in RU, Earthquake is really, really important for a Pokemon like this. Electric types are inbound after all, and you can win against Yolteon if so. So, obviously, I can't do anything against Bannet, and I'm not gonna risk it. Um, I will really hope a Reader Knockoff or a Shadow Snake would be possible moves for him to go at. So, I thought the Hill is, since the normal typing could work. Could work. It's not the best decision, but it's a decision I have to make. And uh, luckily for me, he just go for the Shadow Claw. And, um, yeah. I'm just going to go for Surf here because of, um, he still got the Yolteon and uh, I just, I can't do it, I can't. Um, and Surf is actually the correct play here and like I said, another risky move on my side. And my opponent is actually going to stay in here and not going to take any chances and uh, I'll say he does some fair damage with the hidden power. Um, he probably would have been better off with the Volt Switch to be honest, but at, at the same time, I think you could predict me to go into my Rhyperior yet again. And like I said, I really needed that Rhyperior for a good condition. So Hitmon Top is gonna come in, and um, I think Seldon has done some good, actually good denting here. And I felt that I might as well switch out, not to take any fake out. I have no real use for Moltres anyway in this battle since Cabalion is um, is it can't be deal with with other Pokémon. So Moltres is not really really doing anything here. So um, thank you, Moltres. Thank you. So anyway, I'm gonna go to Rhyperior and finally he is in. And um, basically, I'm gonna take a very, very big risk here and go for Rock Blast, hoping that he switch out to the Sigilith, expecting the, expecting the EQ. Uh, I know that it was a risky play, but I actually did it. And look at this. Look at this, guys. It's doing it. It's doing it. It's is a key play if anything because really looking back at it he got Cobalion too who could resist this and um, yeah I am very proud about that play and that could you know really break it for me had he stayed in or anything like that it is not impossible that he would actually have been taken out by the Hitmon top so I'm very proud of that and very 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 risky really and uh, I'm gonna sag off my Saladin right now because you know now that the Siglyph is gone my my hill is, is not really um, important for this battle. I need more momentum. And um, really, he got Cobalion left, he got Hitmon top left, and he got the monster that is Mega Bannet. And um, I'm just going to go into my Rapier because now I know I can go freely for Earthquakes. There is... I have nothing to worry about. He'll actually decide to stay in and go for an Iron Head. And um, he does some fair amount of damage here, and he scores a flinch, which is great. And the second Iron Head will not score a flinch, luckily for me, and I will decide to go for an EQ. And um, this, of course, will take out Cobalion. Wow, Cobalion is such a good Pokemon, are you really? It's, it really is so versatile. I have huge respect for that Pokemon. So you're gonna go to Mega Bandit, and um, I decided to um, predict him for um, some quick moves on Shadow Claw or Shadow Sneak. So I switch into my Toilex, which is, of course, an Pheasant. And uh, he does the right play here, he really do, and just go for knockoff, go for neutral damage. And uh, yeah, I do barely live that, and I gotta go for air lace, which is gonna be enough to take out this bandit because he's a male. But other than that, you know, that is just terrible. <laughs> he really got me there. 
And the last Pokemon he got is the Hitmontop, and um, he's gonna go for the Fake Out, taking out my Toilix. And after this, I will decide to go into my Rhyperior, because I really, really needed him to go for close combat, so he doesn't win the matchup that is the Hitmonchan against the Hitmontop, because I don't know how many close combats I can take. So, I thought that was a good play, I really do, but uh, he will actually show me that he got Mac Punch instead, and at this point I was really scared because he could have Mag Punch and Close Combat in worst case scenario and if so I am not gonna win this matchup because I got no special defense drop I let him get some more leftovers recovery and we are one to one it is against the battlers, the fighters who will win and luckily for me he still shows me Mag Punch and even with Technician Boost he will not be able to take me out but had he had a Close Combat it would have been enough to take me out, so it was really, really scary there for a moment, and um, I will win 1-0 to my opponent here, Swaglyph, and uh, to be completely honest here, had it called any of my prediction or predicted me at least, you know, a few times in the beginning, this might have been one of the fastest battles I ever decided to upload, because I actually played so risky that, you know, it could have ended my, my demise, like, very very early on. This was a very fast paced battlers. We had a lot of offensive pressure and none of us really focused on playing that defensive which in response to that made this battle yeah fast paced and like I said very interesting. Uh, so Spike was definitely GG. It was definitely like a fun battle. I was very glad to have the chance to battle you. So yeah guys I really hope you like this battle of course and if so make sure to leave a like um, and also make sure to check out Joe's channel Swagliff. And I'm gonna link that down below together with his Twitter. Worth mentioning really about Swaglev is, like I said there, uh, he's a great showdown player. He's a very good at predictions game, meta game, he got a good mind game going. He's very entertaining to watch. And also, I really like when opponents behave in, like, in a way he's not accustomed to because he just gets so frustrated. He usually works around really, really well, but at the same time, it's kind of funny to see him just rethink his strategies like really fast, he's good at thinking of his feet and uh, as a direct result of that it gets really fun watching to make sure like I said to check him out and other than that Joe definitely like, like I said there GG it was definitely a fun battle for me I I couldn't really stress this enough but having that you really 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 tried to overpower me early on um, had me going you know badly for most time of the battle it was not until they actually took down the Sigalith that the battle really turned around, it was very late in that game, and that very same prediction could have actually destroyed me, because had it switched out to this Cobalion, there was no coming back from that, and I would have lost in the get-go, and Sigalith definitely possessed the biggest threat to my whole team, being able to super effect damage to everything, and if it was a Cosmic Power set, then you know it would just be the end, there was no way I was gonna come back, and... Um, <clears throat> That really makes for an interesting battle. Sometimes it's just that easy and very easy decisive. Uh, I definitely went for a lot of neutral hits to try to dent his team instead of doing super effective damage because his defensive core, which we both really didn't possess, um, was more about resistant damage and of course being able to um, absorb super effective damage. And I think playing like that makes a play really good because that means you can speed up a battle and just being overpowering and I really think he successfully did that until some point that really turned around late game. Um, so definitely like I said, Joe, GG. And also I really want to thank you for taking the time. Um, he had um, he had other thing going. Um, he definitely celebrated his um, girlfriend's um, birthday and after that actually went and come back for a battle. If I pulled a stunt like that against my fiance, she would have killed me. Not joking around about that, she's a beast. She, she just, she, he, he, she's violence. <laughs> yeah, but anyway guys, I really, really want to thank you guys for watching this battle. Make sure to leave a like, like I said there, and make sure to check out Joe. Definitely check out Joe. And uh, yeah, you know, remember, the sky is the limit. I want to thank you guys for watching this battle on this beautiful Friday. So good, guys, and take care, alright? Bye.